street. See as I almost run over those two old people? That's what kind of badass I am. Welcome to our 2017 Sport Touring Shootout. Tom Rodrick here. Flanking me on my left is Troy Sihan, and on my right is Evans Brassfield. We are in the small Dutch village of Solvang on the central coast of California on a beautiful April morning. I am aboard the KTM Super Duke GT. Troy is aboard the MV Agusta Turismo Veloce. And Evans, he's aboard the BMW S1000XR. Now, the BMW and the KTM are very, very closely matched motorcycles. The MV is a little bit of an outlier, a uh, smaller displacement engine, uh, but nonetheless has shown over the course of our hundreds of miles of travel to be quite the adversary for these two larger bikes. We're going to continue on our ride today, and at some point in time, I think we'll be able to figure out who the better bike of this trio is. So this is one of our first big outings for 2017, and uh, besides being sport touring, uh, the impetus behind this one was twin, triple, four. Twin on the KTM, triple on the MV, four-cylinder on the BMW. Uh, I'm not sure if we had an actual preference between engines. Anybody here? I mean, we all know the KTM is sort of the, at least the uh, torque king of these engines, but was it the best engine? It's it's also the horsepower king too, if you look at that dyno chart. <laughs> what a monster, I love it! <laughs> I mean, downship. <laughs> oh, I hope you can hear that engine wail, because that's ridiculously fun to do. Again? Sure. Third gear power wheelie, just because. That's how ridiculous this bike is. Yeah, the peak number between the KTM and the BMW are pretty close, but underneath that, the line just goes way in the KTM's favor. It's monstrously powerful, horsepower and torque, but of course it has a 300cc advantage over the BMW and 500 over the MV. What do you expect? The KTM is a sledgehammer of an engine. I mean, everything it does is, is completely unsubtle. You sit on it and it's like, you know, it's just, it's just chomping at the bit. And then you give it some gas, it's got that great deep exhaust note. And, and you feel the whole thing just pulses. I'm not talking about annoying vibration, I'm talking about power pulses. You can feel it get, it's gathering up its steam and it just taking off. I mean, it, it's, it's a kick in the pants. It really is, and we should definitely, Troy mentioned, I mean, it's, the MV is, you know, out displaced by 500 cc's by the KTM, but uh, that thing makes up for it in lesser weight, right? It's the lightest weighing bike here. The KTM's about 10 pounds heavier, but it doesn't have a center stand like the MV does. So if you added a center stand on, that's another 10 pounds right there. Wait a minute, let's just take a second to absorb what you just said. The KTM is anywhere 10 to 20 pounds heavier than the MV with or without a center stand, however you want to put that. But it makes how much more power than the MV? It's, it's basically the Super Duke R with saddlebags, right? That monstrous 1300cc V-twin just makes stupid power with the two O's, stupid power. Woo! <laughs> it's crazy how KTM did that. Definite cool points in the KTM's favor. Well, and just from the moment you sit on the KTM, it's got the most aggressive stance. It feels the most purposeful when, when you sit on it. I mean, it's got that flat seat with, I mean, it's padded, but it's got the firmest padding of the bunch. And it just, it puts you in a position where you, you just want to say, I'm just going to go ahead and say, you want to say F you to the world. Just crank that throttle and go. <gasps> Evans. <laughs> so to, to put it more uh, subtly, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the KTM, when it comes to sport touring, underlines sport in that, in that compound phrase. In bold italics. Right, right, right. So, but not that the BMW isn't sport. I mean, that thing will hang with the KTM pretty much everywhere. 
Yep. Uh, it does it in a more comfortable fashion. I think it has one of the nicest seats. Its uh, seating position is very almost Goldwing like, and you know you're very upright. You're not in the aggressive position like the KTM. With the dynamic suspension, it's you know on the freeway, it's it softens up, and you don't feel the the expansion joints as much. Whereas, and then when you get in the tight and twisty stuff, it becomes more sporting. I won't say it emphasizes touring. The emphasis is maybe on the hyphen between sport and touring if we want to parse it that small. I mean, the, the biggest beef I have against the BMW is the seat height. You know, I've got a 32 inch inseam. I'm you know, relatively long in the legs and um, it's work turning that bike around you know, at a stop, but trying to back it into a parking space and stuff like that. I'm, I'm sure you have a thing or two to say about yeah, that. Yeah, you Troy. guys are definitely taller and bigger than me and the BMW <laughs> does not work well with my short and stubby legs. Uh, one, it's the heaviest bike here uh, and that alone makes it a chore to turn around, which we do a lot for these types of things with the photo passes and whatnot. Um, but two, the seating position, yeah, it's comfortable, but I say a lot in my reviews how I like wide bars for the leverage it provides when you're going through twisty stuff. This might be the case where the BMW's bars are a bit too wide for me. Oh, wow. I, I would prefer them a little bit narrower. Um, and then the elephant in the room with the BMW was the vibration. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Yeah, they've, they've tampered that a little bit from this initial launch where it would put your hands to sleep on our original sport touring trip. That was one of my least favorite motorcycles. It's better, right? I think, I think it's markedly better. It's markedly better, better, but still there's always an ever present you put your hands there, you can feel it. You can feel it in the foot pegs, you feel it through the seats. And see, that's funny. I was going to say the exact opposite. Is it was an always a prominent presence um, in the old version. Now it's only at certain RPM. I mean, I could feel it sometimes, but with any inline four, you're going to feel it. But it's there's certain RPM, like we were talking yesterday about 7,000 RPM. It vibrates your crotch, which some people might find pleasurable. But um, <laughs> me, it just made me want to get through that RPM range and get into an area where it wasn't. Uh, so annoying. And my problem is, it's $22,000. For $22,000 as is, I mean, it's 16 if you can get the base model one, which don't exist, it's like a white elephant. Yeah. It's paying that kind of money, I basically, I'm looking for close to perfection and it, that engine doesn't deliver it for me. Which then brings us to the MV Agusta. <laughs> well, in, in the MV Agusta's um, favor, I think it has the most comfortable riding position, but it's relaxed. Yeah. In fact, I, I would feel like if you move the pegs a little bit further forward, it would, I would call it almost cruiserish. But again, in, for, in its comfort level. For me, being smaller than you two, the MV seating position is perfect for me. I, I, I absolutely love the way it puts me. It's, uh, the pegs are in a great position. The bars are just where my hands would fall. The, the bars are just wide enough for me to toss it in corners the way I want to. That's kind of the Goldilocks bike for, for my size. You guys are taller than me. Probably it's a bit more cramped for you two. Not cramped, it's just between the three. You just notice that you know, the BMW is you know, fairly like this and straight up. The KTM a little more racy. The seating position on the MV is definitely the tightest. You know, the reach to the bars is the shortest. It's compact. It's got this kind of tight little configuration. But, you know, even for me being about six foot, it's still comfy, it's roomy. I'm not complaining, you know, the reach of the bars is fantastic. Uh, you know, foot peg to seat distance is fine. I haven't had any, you know, crimp in the knees. All three bikes have manually adjustable windscreens. The MV is the nicest. You just reach up here, grab the lock, pull it up, presto. Uh, really super. It does help. It will change the airflow significantly. It's kind of between the BMW and the KTM, I think. The BMW just, wow, man, that thing's a barn door. That really knocks the wind out of your face. This guy does a pretty good job. I thought the BMW had the best bags here. They were the easiest to open and close. They have a nice internal shelf underneath the outer door so that stuff doesn't fall into it easily. However, when something does fall into it, you might not see it and you're wondering why the heck it won't close. But um, then, uh, they're easy to get off, super easy. Uh, they're not fiddly at all, which is what I would call... The MV's bags? Yes. Yeah. Generally speaking, the MV's bags are a bit more finicky to operate than the KTM or the BMW. Not difficult by any means. It's just more steps involved, a little bit more precision involved to light it, line up the, the, the edges precisely and close the latch and all of that. But... All three bikes, the bags hold helmets, 
full-size helmets so you can stuff that in the bag and go to your destination in peace knowing your lid is put away safely uh, but I gotta say the Beamer, the Beamer and the KTM as far as ease of use for the bags those two bikes went out just a strange thing with like the KTM I mean it almost feels like I was breaking the key off to turn it from the lock to the unlocked position but uh, I do like how you just yeah you have the one little push down mechanism bag pops open mm -hmm. you know they're watertight I took the thing to the car wash hit it with the sprayer nothing came you know water inside um, and they they attach so solidly too they're not rattling around back there in any way yeah, which is really good So yeah, the BMW and the KTM both have the semi-active suspension and they both work great and you can feel a difference when you actually change the settings. The MV, like we mentioned, has the old school analog knobbies that you twist and turn and it did take some adjusting and some fiddling for us to get the bike to work well, but once we got it there, personally, I love the way that MV handles. Once we got the suspension dialed as best we could with what we had available. If you do know how to dial suspension in, you can get that MV working pretty well. If you just want to push a button, have the bike take care of it, and go rail, KTM and BMW. Well, even between those two, what I found was interesting is on the KTM, you know, because of its race, your seating position, you know, I'm more like leaning off the bike and like, let's go, let's go fast, you know, with the sport touring rig. On the BMW, like you were saying, Troy, with the great big wide bars, I didn't lean or anything. I just kind of sat there went like this. <laughs> you, know, you just kind of do a little counter steer and that thing just goes wang, wang, wang and, you know, just, just banks into the corner. No problem. And, uh, but it also, it holds its line really well for being the heavier bike here. Uh, it's still, like, it transitions nicely, holds its line. Like I said, I could go as fast on it um, as I could on the KTM. Once we got it working, it worked really well. I just never felt as comfortable or as planted on it as I did on the KTM and the BMW. Uh, so I definitely feel like the KTM, if it were my money for 20 grand, if money weren't an issue and I wanted to go sport touring and the roads I were choosing to go on were just all twisty roads with barely any freeway stuff or straight line stuff, that would be my bike that I would pick. Um, but the MV is a very close second to me. Once we got the suspension dialed and I could feel comfortable just railing it through corners, I like that MV almost as much as that KTM. It was just super fun to wring its neck engine-wise, whereas the KTM you can just rely on that bottom-end grunt to get you wherever you wanted to go. And then the BMW was a far away third. Didn't ignite my happy sensors like the other two bikes did. I know you disagree with that yeah, opinion. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> In many ways, it's a toss-up between the BMW and the KTM. It's, it's more of what type of mood am I in? Am I in an aggressive, go fast, you know, grit my teeth type of mood? Then I'm going to go with the KTM. Um, if I'm looking at, like you said, sitting in the saddle and you know, not, not hanging off type of thing, I, I think the B BMW would be it. Um, I think that the BMW is a little more versatile than the KTM if you're choosing between those two. Um, so that's why it gets my nod because I tend, tend to go more towards utility overall in, in my choices and I'm not saying the um, MV isn't a great bike it just it just didn't hit my pleasure sensors the way it did yours. The BMW I think is actually the best bike here uh, it's got everything I want all the electronics cruise control uh, suspension heated grips you name it everything's laid out. massage. Well let me get to that <laughs> uh, you know the bags the seating position yes uh, but that a little bit of buzz and then sometimes a lot of buzz is basically just a deal breaker. Uh, I can't, it just is too much. I can't take it. So the MV actually will probably be my, you know, second choice bike here. And really uh, depending on, I and mean, if I had 16 grand in my pocket, I would put that as a down payment on the KTM and then finance the other 4,000. Because really out of these three bikes, that is the bike to have. Uh, man, big booming, you know, V-twin good electronics. The smile it puts on your face. It just, you can't take that away from that motorcycle. So that's my two cents. So clearly two thirds of us have differing opinions on how these three stack up, which means, lovely viewers, we need to go to our scorecard, fill that out to get an actual winner. 
So to see what we think, go to Motorcycle.com, check out the story there to see our winner. And if you like this video, subscribe below, leave your comments below, and be nice. And we'll see you next time. War and Peace or something. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Sorry, Look, there's just three bikes. Okay. Okay. Say it it's, it's gonna be the most perfect opener ever. <laughs>